Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostolate and Silence and today we have a very interesting video to react to by Yusuf Estes. I believe it's going to be a very interesting um, video and it says that the lie of Santa Claus by Yusuf Estes. Guys, trust me, I really love um, Yusuf Estes um, teaching and I believe that all of us are going to enjoy this so guys if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video i'm a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's religion this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so let's get down to this video and check this out all of us are susceptible to people telling us stuff from the time we're born. We don't know. I'm a little kid. I'm born and I come into the world and people start telling me stuff. Who's the person I'm going to trust the very most after being born? Your mother. There is no doubt about that. If you can't trust your mother, I want to know who you can trust. <laughs> this is the one that gives you physical nourishment yeah. from her own body gives you the ability to speak a language that's why it's called your mother tongue this is the one that teaches you how to walk yeah. teaches you what you know my mother was a school teacher and she taught me what i know of the latin language she taught me what i know about math she would sit with me many times after school on the especially in the summertime trying to make me be a scholar she wanted me to be a professor of something I didn't make it, <laughs> but she tried. And I know that all the mothers want the best for their kids. Even, even the worst of mothers still, she was, still wants the best for her children. Yeah. So how about if your mother's, from the very beginning, the things she's teaching you are not true, then what will you do? Hmm. You have no reason to doubt her. That's a problem. But in the West, especially in the United States, we are lied to from the time we're born. Our mothers lied to us, our fathers lied to us, our uncles, aunts, cousins, grandparents, teachers, preachers, all of them lied to us about some very important things to us. Now, I was in a university in Indiana and I said it just that same way. Why I wanted to get a big reaction because Muslim were not Muslim. And they gave me the reaction I wanted. You know, they were like, what? what? How dare you say that? Boy, do you know where you are? Don't you call my mother no liar. <laughs> I was up on a big stage. I wasn't worried. I said, okay, okay, settle down, settle down. They, they, they were, the audience was going pretty wild, you know. And I said, okay, take it easy. I just have one question. And after you answer the question, we'll see what I said. How old were you when you found out there was no Santa Claus? should have seen their faces. By the way, they weren't laughing. They were like, oh God. You see, because I do remember that moment real clear. It sticks out in my mind even today. I came home from third grade in December, parked my bike, ran in the house. Mom, 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 what's the matter now? She's washing dishes, you know. I said, mom, the kids at school, they're saying there is no Santa Claus. She didn't even look up. She just said, don't tell your sisters. <laughs> At that moment, I was thinking, you know, like Luke Skywalker, my mother has gone over to the dark side. <laughs> It might seem funny now, but it was pathetic. My heart jumped up in my chest. I felt like I was gonna have a heart attack and I ran to my room crying. And I was thinking, I wanna call my grandmother. I wanna call my grandmother. I want her to tell my mother this is a big lie. Oh, I know if I call my grandmother, cause she would never lie. That's my grandmother. She'll set everybody straight. 
my dad I don't know because you know we didn't have a close relationship back then but still you know what I mean yeah he'll set it straight because I know he's a straight shooter yeah then I thought about it Christmas coming up a couple nights so what I did I laid there on the couch you know and listened to him playing the radio back then we just had radio and listened to that and the music coming over there for Christmas Merry Christmas all that stuff going on and on I kept pretending like I was asleep then I heard my mom say, shouldn't we wait a little longer until, you know, maybe he goes to bed. Dad said, ah, he's asleep, he'll never wake up. I said, man, I got him going. I had my back to him, I was, put my head down in the couch and I'm listening real close. And she said, okay, let's go get the stuff. <laughs> no way. No way. And I heard him bringing the stuff in and one of the things was a, a bicycle for me. And you know, as much as I wanted that bicycle, it was killing me to know that they had done this. And I still didn't want to believe it. And the next morning, the next morning when they're saying, okay, wake up, it's time for Christmas, Santa's been here. I went out there and I looked, and I knew as soon as I looked at the car down there, I knew the signature, my mother forged Santa's name. <laughs> it took time for me to get over it. I didn't like it. And then I was thinking, you know what? In a few months, oh my God, you don't mean to tell me they're going to tell me there's no rabbit that lays colored eggs? <laughs> what next? If you don't think that has an effect on children, let me share with you something. Islam insists that we never lie about anything, especially anything to do with religion, Ya yulladina amanu attaqallah wa kulu kaulin sadida. O you who believe, have fear for your Lord, for the punishment of your Lord, and always speak the truth. There's no room in Islam for liars. Allah speaks about liars over and over and over in the Quran. One of the chapters of the Quran deals with this subject so strong that it becomes almost like a stanza, a chorus being repeated over and over. Chapter 55, Surah Al-Rahman, Fabi'a'i ala rabbikum atukadiban. Which of the favors of your Lord will you do then deny? It's very clear. How many times is that in there? Many times, isn't it? Is a lot like liars? Kadib, kadiban, that's two liars. Kadib is a liar. And Allah talks about constantly in the Quran, those who give hadeb to the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who give the lie to the proofs and the signs of Allah. There's no room in Islam for liars. There's one hadith, I've been told that it's not sahih, but it is perhaps hasan. This means that we won't use it for fada, anything more than fada, we won't use it for a, a rukun of Islam, but it means that you consider this saying that the Prophet ﷺ had responded when somebody said about a Joban, could he be a believer? A Joban is a coward. He runs away in a war. Could he still be a believer? He said, yeah. They said, what about somebody who is uh, like Bakhil? This is somebody who is stingy. He won't give any charity. Could he still be a believer? He said, yeah. What about somebody that's Kadib, a liar? No. No. There's no room in Islam for this. Now, that I made my point, that was for the Muslims, by the way. Hmm. That's a very uh, interesting uh, video, of course. Even I myself, I find it difficult to be able to, I can't even really remember the year I was able to understand that um, there is no um, Santa Claus. To whether Santa Claus is good or bad, I didn't know as of then, but as of now, I could tell you that Santa Claus is not right. Santa Claus is not good for Christianity. And you're gonna ask me how. For some people who come from um, Africa, because where I come from is um, Africa, so for some people who come from Africa, what we are used to in Africa is masquerade, right? When I grew up, when I was young, and then I was in my country, 
with my parent of course we are used to the masquerade right here yeah, masquerade which is equivalent to the white man called santa claus and i could remember that my parent will not like me to go and see the masquerade of course they are going to beat me if i do that but they will allow me to go and watch santa claus and the santa claus who give us a gift now this is what they end up doing what they did was they decide to accept the white man um um masquerade which is a santa claus right you accept santa claus you feel it was okay for your children right here yeah, they go through christmas seasons and all that but it feels like masquerade is wrong not knowing that both are wrong i don't know to whether <laughs> they were aware it was wrong or because the sea people do it and they just accept it i do not know <laughs> i don't just know probably when i travel back to my country maybe i would need to really sit down and ask them it is funny but it's not funny seriously it's not funny because you could see that you understand you end up doing something you are not supposed to do and still provoke the anger of god upon you upon your life upon your family and upon your nation both consciously or unconsciously i do not know if you are aware of it or not but of course intentionally we always feel like yes we are waiting for christmas so that we can go meet santa claus we get gift from santa claus and all that and all these things understand keep um happening not knowing that all these things you understand you are alive we got consume in it and of course we believe in it we always believe in it seriously i can't even remember the year i got to realize that the santa claus santa claus is not what true now one thing i want to say to you listening to me is that the reason why i am saying all these things is i want you to understand that just like the way we are enjoying this art uh, is very beautiful this world is very beautiful it has beautiful things and you can enjoy from some of the things god have created and given wisdom to humans they have created and it's very beautiful no doubt it's very beautiful but one thing i wanted to understand is hell is real and heaven is real so all i'm trying to say to you is that whatever you are doing here on this earth you should be very intentional about everything you are doing once you are intentional about it, then at that point in time, you would realize that it was someone that makes you to be alive. There is someone that created you to be here. And the person that created you to be here is God. And everything that you are doing here on earth, I'm trying to make you to understand that don't forget your maker. Always be very intentional of every decision you are taking because in all that god is going to ask you and when god asks you at the end of the day what will be your response that's why in a sense i want you to be very intentional about everything you are doing for god is going to ask you and if he asks you will you be ready you understand to face you understand his judgment and that's why i don't want us to get consumed about whatever that is going on here we have to believe that here is just like a marketplace people go to the market to buy and sell and at the end of the day, what happened? They return back home. They are not going to stay here permanently. And that's how, you understand, heaven, you understand, is. We are just here on a temporal basis and we are going to return back. No matter how sweet the market is, we buy, we make a lot of profit. Definitely, we will still return back home. This is what the earth also, you understand, this world represent. We are going to return back to our maker. And if you do, what will be our fate? And that's why I says heaven is real, hell is real. And I, all I'm saying is I'm giving an option to choose. And choose wisely. For everything you do, there's a consequences. You're going to give accountable of everything you are doing here on this earth. And that's why we should not be carried away. But we should remember that somebody sent us here and we'll return back to him. May God bless you all as you listen to me. And I want you to drop your thought and opinion at the comment section and I'm going to read them and respond to it. And if you have any recommendation, also drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. May God bless you and have a blessed week.